already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought, fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have long to At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humble, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. So this last week I was looking at some pictures. Some pictures of past confirmation activities with you guys. They brought back to mind some memories and they made me laugh as I was sitting there. Remember a couple of weeks ago when we were on that van trip and Krista over there decided to run down the big M at Platteville and said, everybody follow me. And as she was running, she fell smack on her butt right in, in the middle of the Platteville M. And then I found that picture of you guys on that very same trip all in the children's, children's bouncy house at Cable Car Square in Dubuque. We actually had to ask to have all of the little kids removed from the bouncy house so that the confirmation students could go in and bounce around for a while. And then remember a couple of years ago over at Green Lake when we were acting out a Bible story. And yes, Hunter, you played the prostitute. <laughs> and you were so good at it. That was cool. <laughs> or there was the time that Peyton, over there, Peyton had to drink a can of soda in a drinking competition of soda. Now the only thing is she had to take her sock off and put it over the can and drink the soda through her sock. <laughs> Peyton has never worn dirty socks again. And then in my pictures, yeah, each one of you is going to get it. <laughs> Then in my pictures I found Cassie, who had a simple little job to do in the game she was playing. All she had to do was squeeze the juice out of a half of grapefruit under her armpit. She had more on her than in the uh, glass. And then there was one of Maddie wearing a very large bra on the outside and sitting on Kayla's lap trying to make her laugh. And of course, we all know Kayla. She laughed. Because everyone else was too. And Darian, you were there. Your head was wrapped in duct tape with the sticky side sticking out. And then you were picking up plastic spoons from the floor on your head. <laughs> and of course, I know you all have loved bobbing for dill pickles in a tub of baked beans and Hershey syrup. If you haven't tried this at home, you should. 
And in all of the pictures of any of these confirmation students, you will always find Donna Agnes, oh, I love it, Donna Agnes standing quietly off to the side with a big smile on her face. So after looking at all those pictures, I decided that one thing about our youth activities around here is that they are very humbling. One might even call them humiliating. It's hard to be prideful and conceited when you are stuffing a smoked pig's ear on a string down your pants leg in a relay race. It's hard to be arrogant and snooty when you have just Finish drinking a blended Happy Meal shake, and you're trying real hard not to puke. <coughs> it's hard to be condescending when you're carrying chicken feet in your mouth across the room. It's hard to be condescending when your face is covered with peanut butter and Cheerios. You just can't be pompous at that time. And believe it or not, Believe it or not, there's purpose in all that goofiness. These kinds of crazy and fun activities, I mean, I enjoy them. These kinds of crazy activities help us remember that as people of God, we have no reason to be haughty or stuck-up people. In fact, Jesus wasn't any too excited about pride-filled people. And it's hard, it's very hard, to have much pride left after you've been holding a foaming Alka-Seltzer tablet in your mouth with 7-Up, trying to prevent the foam from running out. Any of you ever had to do that? Yeah, I love it. Now the gospel lesson today is all about pride and humility. The parable that Jesus told about the two men praying reminds us of what matters to God. What matters to God? And it's not pride. It's not pride that would hold other people in disdain. Through that gospel parable, Jesus helps us see that when we have so much of that kind of pride and make ourselves or attempt to try to make ourselves so much better than our neighbors, then we cannot find space for God or for others in our lives, and that becomes unhealthy. Pride or conceit doesn't help us sustain relationships. Personal pride doesn't win for us forgiveness or salvation. This kind of pride doesn't motivate us to follow through on our baptismal promise. And that's the promise that the seven of you are going to affirm today in a few minutes. That's the promise to proclaim the gospel through your words and deeds. The promise to serve all people, to follow the example that Jesus has set for us, and to engage in prayer, devotion, and worship regularly. Humility, not pride. Because pride will not exalt us before God. Jesus also gave us direction for what is important in that gospel parable. What matters is that we understand God's gracious, unconditional love for everyone. Did you get that? Everyone. What matters is that we accept that God is the one who doles out the good things and then surprises us every day with grace. What matters is that we come before God as humble people in gratitude for what God does for us. Humility is what matters. An ability to get rid of our self-arrogance and to have compassion for all that God has made. That's what's important. Maybe we could define this humility that Jesus describes in the parable today as a hunger to trust everything to God and then to live by God's grace. <coughs> Krista 
Peyton, Darian, Cassie, Hunter, Donna, Agnes, and Maddie. Today, you will celebrate that you don't have to come to Sunday morning confirmation class anymore. And I'm just as happy as you are. <laughs> but to walk away from your faith and your baptismal calling right now, simply because confirmation class is over, would be to exercise the kind of pride that Jesus is cautioning us about. Humility before God is a lifestyle. And each one of you, seven you, and each one of the rest of you in this sanctuary, we get to choose our lifestyles. And I pray <coughs> that you will choose this lifestyle. I pray that each one of you will stand firm in the things you said in those faith papers that you've been presenting the past couple of weeks. I pray that worship and compassionate work for justice will be the lifestyle that you choose. And I hope this morning that you find some consoling, exciting joy in the words of the hymn that we're going to sing following the sermon. The words that go like this. Do not be afraid. I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you, and you are mine. For all who humble themselves will be exalted. Amen. The congregation and youth may be seated, and I've asked Renee Kuzak, the president of the congregation, to come forward and present the confirmation class of 2011. 2010, what year are we in? <laughs> It is my honor to present them. Krista Ann Brown. Peyton Kalina Castillo. Darian James Driscoll. Cassandra Yvonne Foy. Hunter Manuel Henderson. Donna Agnes O'Kane. Madeline Murray Olson. Thank you. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new faith. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Students, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do the seven of you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, together say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, together say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, together say, I renounce them. I now invite you to share your faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed.
It's amazing how much louder they can be on a youth trip. <laughs> now you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? That is, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through your words and actions, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, individually your answer is, I do and I ask God to help. I would now invite you to come around to the front of the rail and spread out, and I would invite family members and baptismal sponsors to come forward and join your youth for the laying out of hands. Stir up in Krista the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Peyton the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. You guys are out of alphabetical order. Stir up in Hunter the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Cassie the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Donna the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen.
Stir up in Maddie the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Confirmation students, I'd invite you to look at the congregation, and you may greet them and give a blessing with your applause. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As the confirmation students and their families return to their seats, please share a sign of peace with each other.